<laughs> Here's the deal. We're sitting on squeaky chairs, Mark Bossy. That was some noise you just made. It's the chair. It's the chair. It's the chair. Mark Bossy, Lee Check said, of course, and Paul Doroshenko here for Here's the Deal. And what's the deal with captured whales? Now, I find this interesting because Russia captured seven orcas a while ago, and they're sending two to a delphinarium or dolphinarium or something like that yeah, yeah. in Sochi just really to capitalize on the tourists there for the Olympics. Bad idea? <laughs> well, what, what have they done in Sochi that's a good idea? <laughs> good point. What are they gonna, I mean, I, I was joking at the office, are they, gonna, are, gonna, are they gonna gather up all the gay athletes and like feed them to the whales? That would be entertaining. Well, they might. Maybe they're gonna pardon the whales when it's done and release the and then whales release and them. And then they'll look like of, heroes. Yeah, it's all exactly. a big PR stunt. I don't know, I mean, I just, I don't, I, don't, I don't think I'm gonna find anybody in Canada who's going to agree that this is, uh, uh, appropriate course of and action. And I think we're all a little jaded. Nothing Sochi does is right in our eyes no. anyway. We are all thinking that every, from security to their human rights stances to the whales, n nothing they do. Well, that may be unfair. I mean, uh, Vancouver was not properly characterized. Remember in the British media, the way that we were, oh, they that took we shots were described. At us? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. before the Olympics happened, it yeah, took place here. So, but yeah, and we're, know, we're, but this is really, it's just so offensive. We're a I little mean. vulnerable too. I mean, we have a long history. I think we have the, the longest history with um, killer whales in captivity, well, but, we had, but we had all the right reasons, right? I mean, if we you did. read this- mm -hmm. Did we? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, oh, well, in the sense that originally it was rescue, research and rehabilitation, it led to, you know, fanciful, uh, entertaining aquarium antics mm -hmm. of Can time. Canada was also part of the industrial whale whaling complex for the longest time, and the oh, International sure. Whaling Commission was established not for the purpose of conserving whales, but to preserve it for the purpose of harvesting whales sure. later on. Mm -hmm. But I, so. I, and, be, and because of these things, I'm, that's my point though, is that, you know, Russia could be sitting there talking about us right now going, how dare they criticize us? Well, and that's the thing, because I, I think, uh, I was saying in the office, we're really far advanced in the way we deal with all sorts of issues. Yep. And we forget that if you you know put the world on a pyramid, we're up near the very top. Yep. Everyone else is still figuring things out. Oh, that's not fair. That's very, you know, I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> it's that's simplistic. cultural. Yeah, I know, but I mean, it's like... A, it's almost cultural imperialism to think of some other culture like that. I mean, I'm, Go, I'm disturbed. <laughs> I'm disturbed by it, but then I have trouble. I mean, I support sealing. I support the seal industry. I don't, you know, I don't have a problem with the seal industry, but I have a big problem with the whale industry. Why? Because with the whaling industry? Yeah. Because pretty much all of the large whales are endangered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of the large whales are part of our endangered species. And seals and, are like and the we, pigeons of and the sea. And we hunted these things for 150 <laughs> well, the seals years. Well, whale, yeah. I mean, not only that. I mean, it's uh, it's almost subsistence hunting for whaling in Newfoundland or for sealing rather in in Newfoundland. It's mm -hmm. not like we're we're depleting the seal stocks or something like that. And there is an argument to be made that uh, the reduction in seal hunting has led to the destruction or contribution to the destruction in the cod stocks. So. Uh, you know, that's how I guess I justify my own uh, hypocrisy when it comes to um, Glad you said it. whaling. <laughs> oh, well, I, look, I hate hypocrisy. I can't stand it, it. And it hurts even more when it's me. It exists. It exists. All right, let's move on to our next topic. Komagata Maru, a uh, young man caught peeing on the monument. Uh, brazen daylight peeing. Uh, lots of people up in arms, as you would be, because this was really a, a moral issue. Like, how dare you pee on a, a monument uh, to this? However, it turns out uh, he is potentially mentally ill um, and maybe not fully aware of what he was doing. Should he get off on that? Absolutely. And in fact, I, you know, when I read the statement, um, it wasn't just this afternoon that they released that? Mm -hmm. From Jim Chu. Right? Yeah, Jim Chu. Right. Um, you know, the, my first thought was, thank God. Finally, he and others might say, you know, listen, people, before you blow up, freak out, have a cow, you know, uh, reserve a little bit of tolerance and understanding for people who are, are troubled and in, and we have a lot of them we have a lot of them and if you you know just a modicum of love and and understanding of what they're going through peeing peeing in public maybe against a monument yes 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 but even if he knew what that was and was being you know mean spirited about it this is an ill person mhm mm uh, okay and but i'm sure it does happen a lot that we just don't know about this person oh, for sure. happened to get caught Poor on, on a monument? Doing I, don't, it I don't think it happens a lot on a monument. I don't think it happens a lot on a monument like that. And it's a, I mean, I can understand the reaction that people have mm -hmm. because this is a, um, 
a very painful part of BC's history and uh, uh, painful for everybody. Um, but I guess yeah, that's what I adds mean, insult to injury, right? Yeah, but I mean, uh, the, I guess the thing is, after reading Jim Chu's statement, uh, you kind of come to the conclusion that the full explanation is often the best explanation, mm -hmm. right? You know, like we are all sort of understanding of it now, mm -hmm. and we all had this sort of sickening feeling when we first saw it, and now you realize, okay, this isn't somebody who's just out to be disrespectful, mm -hmm. it's somebody who's got a problem. I thought, Lee, you might have a different opinion, I, because I think women tend to view this a little bit differently, because we don't typically pee in public, uh, yeah, <laughs> or I, I, in hey, public well, places. I, I, <laughs> it's happened, yes, it happens, but let's just admit it's a little harder for us I was, to pull it off. No I was driving to court, and I was in the right-hand <laughs> lane, turning uh, right off Main Street, and a guy took five steps out into the sidewalk and whooped him down and started peeing, and right in front of me was a police car. And you could see the pain in the faces of the police officers as Who they were discussing who's going to go deal yeah, with it. But and they were just so happy that they drove away and didn't deal with it's it. It's not a criminal offense, though. It's not a criminal offense. Of course no. not. It's a bylaw infraction, I think. Yep. It's a disgusting thing. Yeah, probably because some guy wrote the law. All right. <laughs> let's, let's move oh, on. Oh, and we'll end on that. <laughs> I'll never forget the day I was warned off the blackberries below kind of waist yep, level at golf sure. courses. It hadn't occurred to me before then. Yep. Uh, let's move on to the Hempology Club. Hempology 101. I'm not sure if you saw the segment mm -hmm. before. Uh, UBC, a group of students in this club, uh, held a little vape in, in mm -hmm. a room in uh, the sub student union building. Yeah, Go how, ahead, how many I'm... how many of them have an uh, exception that they can possess and use medical marijuana? We don't know that. Yeah, well, I'm we have no idea. Very few of them. Well, you can guess all you want, but you have no idea whether or not they committed an offense. No, absolutely yeah. not. But I think if I mean they made it quite public that they were going mm -hmm. to do that, knowing I mean they're students, they should have done their research. You know, maybe oh, we they shouldn't don't need be to doing do research. They know exactly what they're doing is against the law, yeah. but that's the problem. It's I a political think... protest. Ex there, it's a protected constitutional rights. They're allowed to protest well, on student land. The student, uh, the authorities... taxpayer-funded uh, university that's Wrong. there for everybody. It's... And the whole idea of a university is this to be is, able to have this, an open and this free is discussion. As much, this is as much UBC's fault as it is theirs, in my opinion. And that's why we're here. Opinions. <laughs> <laughs> you, let a, you let a club function in that capacity that's called the Hempology 101, it's quite public about what it is they do, you're going to expect that. Hemp supporters. Right? So letting, allowing them to, to, do the, to do these meetings is, had to come with, there has to be an awareness of what they're doing. So shame on you, UBC, for freaking out now. The other side of this is... It's, well, UBC isn't it's, necessarily freaking out. It's the alma mater that's, society. So, yeah, yeah, right. But they're the ones who allowed them to book the room. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah. what, that's what I mean. Well, the so now the other thing, the other thing students, is, were... it's, an, it's an absolute sign of disrespect and immaturity, these, these little pricks. They're pricks. Oh, all right. They're, because the, for me, I think, the, the, if I think about it from, from, from the alma mater and the university's perspective, you're allowing people to have, host a, a function in your, in your building and in the same way that you wouldn't let them just without a license drink alcohol, which is completely legal because of liability issues, they're, they're, they're going to they're gonna spark up. Mm -hmm. But that's, right? I see that, I mean, look at the big 420 protest. I mean, there is a whole air of acceptability with marijuana. Sure, and it's a political protest. I mean, these people are actually out there trying to advocate sure. for something, and they're doing it as a political protest in a place where free speech is supposed to be yep. the freest of speech as a university. So, I mean, if this is what they want to do to try and uh, get their... I don't buy that. Get them, Paul, get them I don't on buy TV. That. That's a load of, that's a load of you shit. You know what? I think they, there's, there's they, they rules, are advocating there's, there's for marijuana. There's rules for a reason. They've, they've, they've signed up to go to university. They've agreed to live by the policies of the campus. They're, they, need to, they need to act like adults. They're on the you campus that, where we talk go, about go all and sorts protest, of Go and protest. Go and protest. Talk as opposed talk, to... Smoke, go outside. Pot, smoke wave pot. your sign. There's all smoke sorts of pot. different ways don't to express your opinion. Wow. You know, well, and that's, that's what he a, said. This is a it's club that exists. And, and, irres yeah. Irresponsible approach. And that's what he said. Normally we meet outside, so it's no big issue. Yeah, okay, but you're still breaking the yeah. law. He's probably stoned when And if it's a club, don't make it so public. Absolutely. Maybe they're not breaking law. I have no idea whether or not they're breaking the law. There's a time and the place, and I have no problem if you want to smoke pot. I have no problem. Don't do it when you've made a group. When you've, okay, when so you've the agreed. issue for you is not the smoking of pot, it's the location. Walk your talk, man. Like, you, if you've agreed to some rules, then stick to them. Wow. Go, you know? I know, it's coming from me, right? <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Iconoclast. No, I like it. It's good. All right. Well, thanks, gang. Sure. Paul Doroshenko, Mark Bussey, and Lee Chexted. We'll see you again soon, I hope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Coming up next on Unfiltered, don't sound so damn excited about it. Could this settle the issue once and for all? The Supreme Court of Canada taking another look at assisted suicide.